Hey guys, Paulie from the Complete Personal Trainer Podcast. Today we're going to take a deep dive into program design. So program design is one of the most important things for a personal trainer. I've talked about this in depth before. I think it's something that is still not addressed properly by the vast majority of uh, fitness professionals in terms of the quality of their programming or the fact that they don't do it. Um, It's still a thing where people are doing programs where it seems like just a hodgepodge of things thrown together and rather than call out names, I'd like to help us do it a little bit better. So today I want to address the second most important part of programming, which is specificity. So first, just to cover things quite quickly, is what we need to do is, for all programs, the most important thing is progressive overload. If you do anything a little bit more, you will get better in all domains of fitness if you're starting off as an absolute beginner. So if an absolute beginner who's never trained before does say some leg extensions until fatigue, for example, it just is their test and they can do 15 kilos. If you put them on an exercise bike for a couple of weeks, their leg extension will improve. You get them walking for a couple of weeks, they'll improve. Any kind of fitness improvement, as long as there's the application of progressive overload, will improve non-domain specific fitness. But once we get past the whole idea of uh, progressive overload, then we nearly need to deal with specificity and specificity has two subcomponents directed adaptation and training modality compatibility which we'll touch on a little bit today i want to talk more about specificity and what actually makes a difference in program design so this list that i'll give today isn't super exhaustive it's not it's very hard to give you a complete picture over a podcast it's something that's really well something we go over a lot in the mpc mentoring program Uh, but here's a really good way to get you started so the first thing with specificity is to make sure that your movements are specific to the clients based on the results of movement assessment, which is why all my students learn the MPC movement screen. So very important for individualization for the initial stages of working with the client and getting them up to a performance baseline. It's very important to have baselines. Like we use baselines for a number of different things like blood pressure is a very common baseline that we use to measure people's cardiovascular health and how well they're responding to PEDs, for example. Like if you're on high dose PEDs and your blood pressure is going up, it's not a good sign. So we use that as kind of like our canary in the mine. So when the movement screen, we use that as a way just to get people up to a certain stand. Once they achieve that, cool, we move on. So we need to be specific with the exercise that the clients need to do, program the exercises that they can do without restriction in terms of movement competency, and then not program, and avoid the exercises that they shouldn't be doing yet. Our goal with specificity in this part of training is to take the exercises they can't be, they shouldn't be doing yet into exercises that they can do effectively and efficiently. And part of that will be doing the corrective strategies and the movement skills and the other stuff to help people be able to do these movements or identify through orthopedic restrictions or bone um, morphology, abnormalities, things that they can't be, can't be doing and then adjust it into something that will still target and stimulate the same tissues. The next thing with specificity is the training goal. So we really need to be aware of that uh, because this really influences training more than any other variable. Uh, I see a lot of people you know, uh, program stuff to entertain the client or doing stuff that serves their own biases and their own interest. So we need to um, not get clients to do the things that we have found have worked for us or the things that we're interested in. And then with goals, if the client has multiple goals, our training needs to become even more specific because there are limited demands for recovery. We only have a finite capacity to recover from the stress of exercise. So there's lots of good stuff about that. Alex Villar is probably the number one expert in this area. I highly recommend you check out his content. We're talking about you know multi-goal program design. So how to program for someone who's a power lifter and wants to participate in endurance activities. With strength goals, for example, we're gonna go deeper into goals. We wanna ensure the exercises that we prescribe are specific to the means of testing strength. So most commonly, we'll be programming that for squat, bench, and deadlift, the powerlifting type approach. So we need to make sure our training does that. Although our clients may not want to use those lifts to express their strength. We might find a client might wanna do front squat, trap bar, deadlift, and push press, for example, or they might wanna do chin up, uh, chin up, handstand push up, and pistol squat. It doesn't really matter what it is. You just need to be specific to that type of programming. 
and you need to make sure that we don't over adhere to the principle of over specificity which is just doing low rep training on these lifts now it makes sense intuitively but it leads to staleness and burnout quite quickly so we need to look at things like phase potentiation and direct adaptation which we'll talk i'll talk about in another podcast how they work to design this and then next thing with programming specificity is we want to also identify the weak points for that individual i.e through the movement screen or through observation of their training where they fail on the lift to help uh, people get better at that. So we need to be specific with our assistance exercises as well, not just pick things just for the sake of picking things. Specificity for hypertrophy is another one that has a few individual sub factors within that, like individual stimulus to fatigue ratio. For example, Romanian deadlifts might give a great hamstring stimulus for one individual. For one individual, they might put a lot of strain on the lumbosacral area leading to a lower stimulus and higher fatigue ratio. So you want to be aware of that. And that takes a little bit of trial and error. It's not something that you'll figure out straight away. Um, and we've got like a couple of ratios that we look at with hypertrophy and specificity. The first one is making sure the exercise has a pretty good risk to reward ratio. So, you know, it has a high reward for a low risk, reward being hypertrophy. So an example of this would be a leg press, really high reward, really good leg stimulus, uh, risk quite low. Um, snatch grip deadlift on the other hand, uh, trains a whole lot of muscle groups, a whole lot of fatigue, quite injurious at higher reps in terms of it's quite hard to maintain good form. Uh, so high risk, lower reward because the stimulus is distributed over multiple muscle groups. Stimulus to fatigue ratio, something like a back squat for example, high stimulus but high fatigue. Leg press, high stimulus, low fatigue. And then exertion to outcome ratio, which is basically how objectively hard, or subjectively hard, sorry, people find exercise. So snatch grip deadlifts, uh, you know, subjectively you feel like you're doing a whole bunch of exertion, your grip's getting killed, everything's happening, but the outcome for each of those muscle groups is quite low. Warm-ups, another area that we need specificity, as you can see, it's pretty much everywhere. Uh, corrective strategies should be specific, and then also volume, uh, which I've talked about in another podcast, which we'll talk about again later, and Mike Isvitel has some really, really good stuff here. The other ones that are a little bit more unique for, uh, from my perspective, uh, injury history for specificity. So we'll drop off at this target here, at this uh, this consideration. So with injuries, they do happen, unfortunately. It's not very nice that they do happen. Uh, but they do leave a long-lasting imprint on the person's nervous system and their training, their training abilities and their training capabilities. So it can manifest in a number of different ways. One could be movement apprehension, so people are actually a bit t uh, tentative to do the movement that we want them to do or it can be lowered volume capacity, which means a higher uh, fatigue to stimulus ratio in the formerly injured joint or muscle. And this is something that we can't really, this light's amazing, move around. So with specificity for this, there's a couple of programming considerations that we need to go into. Some clients may always need to have some focus on their program around their particular injury. Um, so an example of this is I've had a bunch of clients who have no ACL due to a surgery, uh, they've avoided surgery, they haven't had anything happen Training program wise, we need to do something to move around that and also to strengthen the muscles around that joint. And it's not something that we can avoid in any of the programs that we write. And we also need to have particular movements, movements that put torque in the knee, lateral strain in the knee. We need to avoid that because of that client's individual injury history. If we had a client who's had a history of disc bulges and multiple incidences of low back pain, what may work for them in terms of specificity is to give them special back strengthening rehabilitative exercises in each and every program not only just for the actual building muscle and building tissue and cap capacity and resilience in those tissues but also for, for cycle the concept of psychological safety that they feel safe doing the exercises that they feel safe doing deadlifts because they know they've built up a big capacity in their lower back through a series of other exercises Having specificity when we look at things like that is what really sets us apart from the pack of other personal trainers. I've seen a lot of personal trainers talk about doing individualized programs, yet all their clients seem to have very similar Metcons in them, uh, which kind of blows my mind. There are exercises that are better for Metcons and others, but they're not looking at their clients in the individual injury history when prescribing these Metcons. An example of that is something like the, um, the Skierg, the one where you throw your arms down really, really aggressively. Doing that for a client who had a history of back problems, particularly disc injuries, may not be the best approach for them because that exercise does involve repeated flexion in the lumbar spine. 
it you know we can debate that quite contentiously over where whether flexion is a bad thing or not but if we just go down the biomechanical approach we probably say it's best to avoid that is there a better exercise selection that will help potentially still give that conditioning effect and then also give them some kind of prehabilitative or rehabilitative strengthening towards solving that lower back problem in the future so guys specificity there is a ton of stuff to talk about i didn't talk about exercise preference conflicting demands doing a needs analysis or training ages so many different things we can talk about in specificity so what i want you to do with this information is have a look at your training programs first thing you do is break it down into sections warm up is it specific to my client's needs or the individual demands of the workout so if you've got a client who's got crappy movement capacity and they really need to get a little bit better to get better results in the rest of their training, if their warm up is five minutes on the treadmill, you need to do a better job. If you look at your client's program, you need to have a reason and a rationale for each and every exercise in the program, what it's trying to achieve is the rep set and overload prescription in congruent with that. And then if that's the case, then you've done a great job with your programming and your specificity is on point. If not, go back and see if you can change your exercises to create a higher degree of specificity and a better outcome for your client. Thanks heaps for listening to my rants, guys. Any questions, hit me up. And uh, please rate, review, etc. on iTunes and Spotify and all other great podcast platforms. And speak to you all tomorrow.